Hi, I'm Tara Adair. I am a third grade teacher here at Holiday Elementary, and today we're going to be exploring animal adaptations and compare, comparing some physical characteristics of birds. All right, boys and girls, we have been learning about adaptations over the past few weeks, right? We've read about them. We've been learning about different physical and behavioral adaptations that animals have, right? Today, we're going to do a little investigation. Remember that word, investigate? We're going to be scientists today and we're going to investigate some bird beaks. We are going to be comparing the physical characteristics of animals, especially birds, and we're going to explain how their special adaptations helps them survive in their environment. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is I want you to look at these pictures for a few seconds and you're going to talk to your teammates about these two questions. I want to know what physical adaptations do these organisms have in common? And then I also want to know how are some of their physical adaptations different? Okay, so we want to know how are their adaptations, what do they have all in common, and what are different about them? Okay, I'm going to give you like one minute to talk with your partner and then we'll share out together. Remember when you're sharing with your partner, you're facing your partner and you're taking turns sharing. Okay, go ahead and turn to your partner. What's the same and what's the different? Kind of make sure you turn to your partner. What's the same about all those organisms? Mm -hmm. Did you guys notice it's the same? What do all of those organisms have in common? They all have beaks. And they all have feet. And they have feet. Okay. What about different? Is there anything that they have that's different? No. Oh, different colors. Okay. What else? Some of them have fur. Oh, they look a little fuzzy. Yeah. 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 All right, if you could turn your body back around. Who can share what you noticed yeah. about these organisms? What do they all have in common? What do they have in common, Prince? Um, what they all have in common is having beaks. Yeah, they all have beaks, right? Okay, what else did you notice that they have in common? Zoe? They have different eyes, so they, they, they all have eyes, right? But they might not look all exactly the same. Okay, Trichaya? They all have fur. Fur? Do they have fur or feathers, right? Although Mateo was saying in his group, some of their feathers almost look a little furry, don't they? They're a little bit like more fuzzy, so it kind of looks like fur, doesn't it? Yeah, but they all have feathers. Okay, Sana? Uh, they, they, uh, they have different colors on their body. Yeah, there's some different colors. Are still the same. Okay. Anything else that you saw that they have in common or different from each other? Last week? They got different shapes. What do you mean different shapes? Like their bodies are different shapes? Yeah. Okay. Sergio? But they all got different beaks. They have different beaks. Sergio, that's actually what we're going to be exploring today is all the different kinds of beaks. When you were looking at all of these different birds, <coughs> all of them have beaks that are not quite the same, don't they? Well, what's different about them? I see different, sizes. what, trick, different sizes? Um, what else? They're all, they're all different shapes. Some are down, some yeah. are straight. Yeah, we've got all kinds of different shapes. Some are pointing down, some are pointing straight out. Medina? Different ears. Yeah. Mackenzie? Different colors. Sometimes they're different colors. Yeah, their beaks are all different. I'm wondering today, why are all of these beaks so different? And here's the question that we're going to be exploring today. Which bird beak is best 
for each type of food. Because we know that birds eat all kinds of different things, right? Some of them eat worms, some of them eat seeds or insects or beetles. Some of them eat other birds and other animals because we know some are birds of prey. And so we're gonna be exploring today which beak works best for each type of food. So we're gonna be doing an investigation in our small little groups to kind of explore that today. Here's what you're going to be doing. In a few seconds, I'm gonna send you off to a station. And in your station, you're going to have a particular kind of food that birds eat, okay? And when you get there, you're gonna be choosing a beak to try out, okay? I have six different beaks that you are gonna be trying out. I have some kitchen tongs, I have a spoon, because some birds have bills that are shaped like that, right? I have a dropper, I have a clamp, and then I have some, a clothespin, and then I have tweezers. Okay, so you've got a bunch of different tools here that are all kind of shaped like different birds' beaks. When you get to your station, you're gonna pick one to start with. And you're gonna to get to do this a couple of times. So you might choose the clamp the first time and then maybe next time you pick the dropper. So you'll get a chance to try out some different tools. Before you get started, you're gonna to talk to your group about which one of the beaks do you think is gonna work best for that particular food. So you're gonna make some predictions just like scientists do. Then I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to try to pick up as much food as you can for your bird. Okay, now think about birds. They don't have hands, right? They have feet, but they, they don't eat the way that we do with our hands, right? They have their beaks. So when you're getting the food, you can't use your hands at all. You can only use your beak. So you're going to use your beak to try to pick up the food. Each food that you're going to pick up, you can only pick up one piece of food at a time. Okay, so as you're collecting, you're going to get one piece of food. And you're going to put it into your stomach. Your stomach is going to be a cup that's at your station. So you're going to pick up a piece of food and put it in your stomach. Pick up another piece of food and put it in your stomach until the 30 second timer stops. When the timer stops, you're going to put your bird beak down and then you're going to count how many pieces of food you got. And then at your station, you're going to have a recording sheet that you're going to be able to write down. We'll get to the recording sheet in just a second, but you're going to have a recording sheet that you're going to write down how much food you collected. And then you're gonna to talk to your team about which beak worked the best. Did you have a question? So like if you use that, um, that one that you just- The clamp? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, if it comes back to you, you can put your hand back up, okay? So you're choosing one tool to try out. How long are you gonna be getting food? Do you remember? 30 seconds. And when the timer goes off, you're going to do what? Uh, put, it put your beak down and then you're going to count your food and see how much food did you get. And then I'm going to ask you to talk to your team about whose beak at your team worked the best. Okay. Here are some of the foods that you're going to be eating this morning. We have a station with worms over here. We have some gummy worms that are pretending to be real worms. We have station two is going to be some seeds. You'll see some sunflower seeds in that station. We have beetles because some birds like to eat beetles. Miss Adair is using some Skittles for that because they're kind of hard and round the way that a beetle would be. Station four is going to be tiny little insects. So I have little pieces of rice that you're going to be trying to pick up. And then station five, some birds drink nectar from flowers. So I have a station where you're gonna actually be trying to get some water from the flower, okay? And if you're in this station, you're going to use a graduated cylinder to put your food in. So you won't pour it in your cup, you'll put it in here. And you're gonna see how much you collect as you go along. And then station six, some birds eat other living things, right? And they have to be able to rip apart those living things. And so in this station, we have some flesh because some animals are gonna have to pull apart the pieces of the animal. So in this station, Miss Adair has stapled some staples to cardboard. And you're gonna try to use your beak to get the 
staple out of the cardboard. And that'll be your food in that station, okay? Those are your six stations. When you get to your station, you're gonna have a recording sheet that looks like this. You're gonna circle whichever tool you decided to use. So you just circle that tool, and then after you're done with your investigation, you're gonna record the amount you collected down here, okay? And at the water station, Miss Adair will have the cylinders there that you're gonna to use to count, and Mr. Dare will be over there to help you with the measurements for that, because for that one, you're gonna write down how many milliliters of nectar you collected. Okay, what questions do you have before we get started? None. None? Mateo? Are all, like, are all, like, um, the, the foods gonna be fake? Yes, all the foods are fake. Yeah. Well, so well, there's some of them are real. They're like real seeds or real rice, but yeah, they're not really insects. They're not really beetles. I don't think you'd want to be playing with insects in our class, right? <laughs> okay, here are my expectations for when you get to your table. You will have two or three kids in your group, so you are going to make sure you're moving quietly and safely to your station. While you're there, you need to be using a level two voice. Okay, so just your group members should be able to hear you. We shouldn't hear you across the classroom. You have to share the beak tools, okay? You don't need to worry about like trying to get there first to get a tool because all of these tools are at every station. So you'll get to try out multiple different stations, okay? While you're working, I wanna hear some of that science vocabulary that we've learned about, okay? Should hear some of those good words that we've been talking about. And then once we finish in our station and we discuss with our team, we'll clean up our station, put all of our food back for the next group, okay? What questions do you have? Okay, listen carefully, because we're gonna get started, okay? Here's what you need to bring with you to your station. You need your pencil, and you need your clipboard for your recording sheet, okay? I want you to look at your card this morning that you have a bird picture on. This is gonna tell you what station you're starting on. So I'm gonna dismiss you from the carpet by groups, okay? If you have the toucan here, raise your hand. You guys are going to station one over there. So can you stand and grab your pencils and clipboards and head to station one? All right, who has the hawk? All right, you guys are going to station two right there at Kaysen's table. Grab your pencil and your clipboard. Who has the woodpecker? All right, you guys are headed to station three, which is back at Lesme's table back there. You grab your clipboard and your pencil. Who has penguins? All right, penguins, you're off to station number four, which is back there at Joseph's table. Grab your pencil and clipboard. Who has the hummingbirds? All right, you guys are on to the nectar station right there. And then station six, my flamingos, you guys are headed over to the flesh station at number six. All right, teams, now I want you to look at the tools that you and your partners have chosen. Whose do you think is gonna work the best. I want you to talk about who do you think is going to work the best at collecting your food. Oh. I actually think um, this one in here might actually be like, because you can like, but it will squish. Them. Yeah, don't so start until this right starts to Why do, you, why do you think that your tool that you chose is going to work? You think hers is going to work the best? Why do you think hers is going to work the best? What do you think, Mackenzie? So maybe like the, like the shape of them maybe is why it's going to work? Okay, are you ready? Yes! Okay, you're going to have 30 seconds. The timer will go off up here, and then remember, put your tool down and count your food. There are blue cups at your table, so make sure you have one. That's your stomach. Okay, so you're gonna put zero. So if you have a zero. Have, uh, okay, let's see. So that's kind of like about maybe one milliliter. So you're gonna put one right there. 
to share with your neighbors whose beak worked the best. So compare your data. Whose is working the best? Seventeen, and I only got three. What did you find out? Did one work better than the other? So yours did work a little bit better, didn't it? Why do you think that is? Because of the way you could grab onto them. Okay. Good job comparing your data. Which beak worked the best? Which one was your beak? Oh, that one worked pretty well at picking up the worms. Which one did you have? How did you do? You got five. Why do you think his worked better, Brayden? Okay, so you had like a little beak and it was harder to get the worm that way? This would have been the best. Oh, you think that one would have been the best? It would be interesting to try out, wouldn't it? Okay, <laughs> Okay, First of all, I want to hear from a few teams. Did anybody discover anything as you were working and trying out your beaks? Sergio, what did you discover? I discovered that with this one you can get more because it will not drop because it got two. That That's how it will not drop the skittles okay so because the beak the pieces were coming together it was easier your partner had more of like a scoop beak and that didn't work as well prince you were having a hard time picking up that food individually weren't you yeah so maybe a beak that can actually grip onto it and grab onto it would probably work better nasir you want to share what you discovered if you were you were using the corner of your beak to get yours okay how about over here? What did you guys discover? Yeah, that one was easier because it can suck the water and oh. they just are, are, are built to grab. They're built to grab. Her beak was built to sort of suck up the nectar. All right. Thank you for visiting our classroom. We hope you enjoyed our lesson on physical adaptations. Go, Go on!